My parents immigrated to Canada a few decades ago. And along with their 12 check-in bags, six carry-ons, and an insane amount of paperwork was something else that they decided needed a new home. Me. As much of a delusional and ignorant child that I was, after three months of holidaying between Kitts Beach and Grouse Mountain, I realized that this was not a temporary affair, but something more, a lot more. In case you didn't figure it out, that's my mom and I with about a quarter of our carry-ons en route to Vancouver. Throughout this new and exciting journey of being here, I have learned a lot of lessons through events with plenty of ebbs and flow. And today, I want to share with you some of my memories and the lessons associated with them. Days after moving here, I started going to a French immersion school. It was hard enough trying to understand a Western accent, and here I was listening to science and history echo down the hallways in French. I was terrified of going to school. I would just sit in the library in a quiet corner, do my homework. I didn't even speak to my parents for weeks on end because I was so upset at them for uprooting me from the only life that I had known before emigrating here. A year later, I had to switch schools again. And this was honestly the biggest hurdle to making friends here. I spent lunchtime sitting alone because my accent was a little too different for a lot of my friends to accept. And the few that were curious about me, they never approached me because I asked too many questions in class. This was lesson one that Canada had given me, perseverance. My parents had left everything behind to give me a better life, the chance to experience true freedom, and I was going to have to make the most of it. So I was going to persevere. And the easiest way to assimilate was through math, a universal language that kept me connected throughout my life here. While I was learning to excel in a whole bunch of different subjects that were new to my educational curriculum, math truly was my savior. I was standing in my backyard in Fraser Heights. A quick glance across the massive field, and I positioned myself in the direction of the wind. My mom and dad are standing behind me, pretending to pay attention to me while they water the lawn. I hold my cardboard rudimentary glider thing that I had built, like that, in my hand, and I launch the very first flight of it as it leaves my hands and I feel its wings rise into the bright blue. I feel true happiness. Since flying my glider at the age of 13, I have been an aviation enthusiast, going on to become an aerospace engineer and working at companies that have truly employed some of the most cutting-edge technology. For me, it was love at first flight. <laughs> However, this enthusiasm for aviation led me to be in many situations where I was one of the few. While pursuing my mechanical engineering degree, I was one of five girls in a class of over 300 undergraduate males. There were hardly any role models, let alone female professors, that I could go and talk to. Group projects? Forget it. Boys in my group never even let me conduct lab experiments because apparently I didn't know how to turn a temperature or pressure gauge in a tank that pretty much resembles the stereo system in your car. By the way, that was the glider that I had built on my very first try. I ended up taking it with me to university, outfitting it with a whole bunch of extra electronics so it could take its first autonomous flight. Now it was time for lesson two, growth. It is extremely important to cultivate a growth mindset and explore fields that are less known to women, especially women in the STEM field. Quite often, I find that I'm the only woman in the room and I'm slowly getting comfortable with this. Despite being told a myriad of stories about the lack of women in this field, I decided to pursue this path not only for myself, but also to increase the diversity within this sector, 
one woman at a time. At my first aerospace job in the UK, I was the only woman to work on the wing design of aircrafts in my division. No one took a short colored woman seriously. I couldn't even hold my daily stand-up meetings without being talked over and questioned every single day. I was constantly made to feel like I was the diversity hire in nearly every job that I've held. I was apparently the number on the spreadsheet that was magically going to make people feel better about themselves. While awaiting my hiring decision for my very first job, one of my closest friends in university, a male, the class valedictorian, and someone who was also struggling to find a job, told me that I would have absolutely no trouble getting that job, because companies usually needed to check off the following boxes. A woman, a person of color, and somebody with a disability. Now, he thought that I was hitting the jackpot because I hit all of those check boxes. I was shocked and felt humiliated. Imagine someone saying those things to you. Now, you might be wondering, what is my disability? I look fine, don't I? The biggest cost that I've paid for being in this field was that of my mental health. Shortly after graduating and joining the field as a female engineer, I was diagnosed with clinical depression. And I am proud to say that I'm still fighting it, and I'm getting stronger every single day. The summer of 2019, an especially rough fire season for California, was what led me to co-found my own drone startup at Stanford University and use my technical skills and work for public good. While plenty of technology is employed in fighting wildfires, the drone-based system that I'm building utilizes artificial intelligence to suppress the losses that are inflicted by wildfires. But how did I go from a nine-to-five job of, for, to thinking about a bizarre idea such as this? Here was lesson number three for me, taking risks. I'm still coming to terms with this, but I think I've always been a little bit of a daredevil when it comes to seeking opportunities. I cannot imagine living a life with the what-if question hanging over me because the reward far outweighs the risks. I'm afraid of not flying. Even if I fail, even if it was a neutral experience, it is always a learning experience. And sometimes, you just have to wing it. <laughs> Through my technology entrepreneurship class at Stanford, my professors encouraged me to practice my pitch for startup accelerators just as a practice exercise in class. While I was busy practicing my oratory skills with my classmates, I decided to take it a step further and pitch my idea at a coffee chat organized by one of my professors, where the keynote speaker was none other than the co-founder of Tesla, Mark Tarpening. Obviously, I was terrified, <laughs> but I learned that if I needed to Ask if I needed feedback, then I was going to have to ask for help. Now, you may as well ask from the best if you're going to ask for help anyway, right? <laughs> My bold move resulted in some very gracious feedback from Mark, who told me to take a step back and consider the positive societal impacts that my startup would have in multiple different industries and to be a force for change. That's Mark and me a few moments before I pitched my startup to him. It certainly wasn't all headwinds after this. I was rejected for funding by multiple startup accelerators. I thought it was only stats for social media clickbait that women co-founders are paid far less than their male counterparts. It hit me hard when I realized I was one of the numbers that made up these statistics. Many of the customers that I interviewed for my startup didn't even give me half as many insights as they would give my male co-founder and I'm still fighting for equal recognition for something that I built. While teaching as a TA, nothing is more gratifying than witnessing my students' aha moments. 
These sudden flashes of realization and inspiration are what make me feel alive. I'm fascinated to see that spark of curiosity and recognition of how a concept can be applied in practice. A few summers ago, I was a TA at Stanford for the Introduction to Programming course. I taught weekly discussion sections and hosted AMA sessions. What Mark had told me about using my technical skills for the public good made me want to pursue this opportunity even more. And now for the final lesson, welcoming self-confidence. From being an immigrant to nearly failing my second year thermodynamics class, what on earth made me think that I could teach some of the best and brightest minds in this country? I definitely had a plethora of imposter syndrome moments when teaching this class. But when I saw my students trust me, I cast aside this doubt, even if it was for just a moment. It is so important to be confident in yourself, in your abilities, and to also have some confidence in those who think that you are worth it. You just have to let life take off and leave your fears on the ground sometimes. The relationships that I've forged with my students further my journey of personal growth through deeper comprehension of, and sometimes even a change in perspective on the topics that I teach. This blurry picture was taken during one of my virtual TA sessions during COVID. Seeing them grow and develop skills that can essentially change their life is truly magical. I encourage my students to not just learn the fundamentals of programming, but to also test themselves on topics that can be tested during technical interviews so that we can together increase the diversity and the number of women in STEM. As you can tell by now, this is definitely a passion of mine. Through this effort, I was able to help quite a few women land their dream roles in the tech field. I have come to appreciate how each change I have made has taught me plenty, good and bad. Moving to Canada was not a choice made by me. But at the same time, I have made the decision to consciously walk on the path that was less traveled. Thriving in turmoil is certainly hard, but it can also be quite exciting if you think about it. So ask yourself, who are you during your toughest times? Are you a seat grabber? Are you looking for the oxygen mask? Are you screaming and crying? Or are you the pilot during your turbulent times? Regardless of who you are, take the opportunity to succeed in uncertainty, because it can be a breakthrough, not only for yourself, but also an inspiration for those around you to also challenge the status quo. We all know that nobody likes adversity. Challenges can be rewarding, but adversity is straight up unfair because adversity fights the dirty. To take on adversity is to challenge the status quo, to break new ground and to invoke change, no matter how big or small. It forces you to grow, to draw a line, to take a stand. It forces you to know yourself, to look yourself in the mirror and ask, am I good enough? And you are, because the strength to look at adversity and challenge it is so powerful, even if you don't overcome it. This is not about the outcome, but rather what you gain from this journey. I've faced immense criticism and racism and gender inequality in my short career so far. Once, I was even told by HR to dress appropriately so as to be, avoid being catcalled. My attire? Black pants and a sweater. In many cities that I have lived in, there has been immense gun violence and hate crimes against people of my community. People like me live in constant fear but we can't just put our lives on hold because you just have to look above the clouds no matter what the weather is, because above the clouds, the sky is always blue. That's me at Cape Canaveral in Florida, sitting in a NASA space capsule, 
pretty much ready to take off. Despite all these incidents, aviation still remains a deep passion of mine. I was the only North American hire at my aviation company in the UK in 2018. And today, I am on the path to launching my very own drone startup in the Silicon Valley. Even though I have arrived, I still carry plenty of baggage with me, and that's okay. Learning can happen in many different ways. We use stories to make sense of our world and to share that understanding with those around us. They are the signal within the noise. I have learned an immense amount and gained an abundance of knowledge from the stories of others. And I have always aligned myself in the direction of the wind. And in return, I have been swept away by the values of endeavoring to persevere, embracing growth, taking risks, and welcoming self-confidence. It's been a great source of inspiration for me to go out there and be something that I could only dream of and I hope that I was able to do at least a little bit of the same for you today. So go out there, turn off your airplane mode, and thrive through your turbulent times. And remember, don't just fly, soar. Thank you.